HEVC testing, AMD support, open beta access. Twitch's enhanced broadcasting beta is getting huge updates and I've got everything you need to know in this video. It's been five months since I first got to talk about the paradigm shift coming to Twitch streaming. Twitch Enhanced Broadcasting. This is a new way to stream to Twitch, wherein your copy of OBS pings Twitch's servers, asks for the best settings for your computer and your internet connection, and automatically picks for you, so you don't have to do any of that, allowing your computer to handle all of the transcodes or video qualities on your end. That means every single quality of your stream, 360p, 480p, 720p, 1080p, and so on, are all technically source quality rather than being transcoded on Twitch's servers. Your viewers get higher quality versions to watch and you get lower latency access to your viewers for more interactive chat, polls, and so on. I've been getting no end of questions about updates with the enhanced beta, whether HEVC and AV1 are available yet, and how it relates to the new OBS 30.2 beta. From the outside, it's easy to think not much has been going on. There's only been a couple updates to the portable builds that we use to test and minimal public announcements about forward progress. But behind the scenes, Twitch has been changing a lot. First, I can confirm as of basically right now, anyone with an NVIDIA GPU or an AMD RX 6000 or RX 7000 GPU can download the beta builds of OBS Studio 30.2 and try out streaming to Twitch with the enhanced broadcasting feature. Yes, AMD users are finally able to start participating, which is great news. If you were part of the closed beta test for Twitch Enhanced Broadcasting, don't worry and don't ditch your portable OBS build yet. You're still in the cool kids club. I'll share some exciting news for you in a moment as well. To take advantage of the open beta in OBS 30.2, open settings, go to stream and sign in with your Twitch account. Then check the Enable Enhanced Broadcasting box. I recommend leaving maximum streaming bandwidth and maximum video tracks checked to auto, but if you specifically want to limit your bandwidth usage for something else on your network, or you know you need a bunch of reserved encoder sessions, you can change it if you need. If you don't know what any of it means, leave it on auto. Then stream as normal. OBS and Twitch's servers will communicate, determine the best setup for you, and start streaming. It all happens super quick. You don't gotta wait for a crazy benchmark or anything. You can just keep streaming like normal. If you do wanna peek behind the curtain, you can use the Twitch Inspector tool at inspector.twitch.tv to monitor your stream stability and see your multiple tracks going to Twitch all at once and all of that. You can also use the advanced stats in the Twitch player to see your current codecs and bit rates at any given quality too, but this lets you monitor your whole total stream stability a lot better. Useful tool to keep, you know, with your stream bookmarks. For NVIDIA users, you'll be able to stream up to 1080p60 with up to five encodes on your GPU. Remember, earlier this year, NVIDIA increased your encode session cap to eight, so you can encode up to eight streams at once. This will use five of those. That still leaves three for shadow play and multi-streaming if you want to use them. For AMD users, you'll be able to stream up to 1080p60 with up to three encodes on your GPU. Each phase seems to start with three and then goes from there as they know cards can handle it. NVIDIA originally started with three as well. Again, this is limited to RX 6000 and RX 7000 GPUs for AMD for now, one step at a time. This is all still in AVC, or H.264, just to be clear. The reason for this is that there is a lot of tech that has to be upgraded and thoroughly tested behind the scenes to make sure any of this works before adding a whole new codec into the mix. I covered the hardcore details in the last video, but this is a whole new pipeline for Twitch for both taking in your video stream Taking in five streams from one streamer is a lot different than a single stream, and delivering it to the viewer. Thus far, a bunch of quirks and bugs have already been fixed and smoothed out, but the cool thing is, this was all done without the streamers needing to really do much of anything. We've updated OBS builds a couple times, but most of this just happens behind the scenes on Twitch's end, which is great. I've been streaming with this feature enabled for all of my Twitch streams since it was released, and I've had constant compliments about transcode quality, impressive latency numbers reported, even from around the planet. It's been pretty solid. Twitch has been making quality and performance improvements and tweaks over time, but because all of this is handled automatically when you connect to your stream, you won't have to be fussed about any of it. The ease of use is a huge accessibility win for the future of streaming even for people like me that teach people how to stream. <laughs> One of the next big steps for Twitch here is completely changing how your streams are delivered to your audience. Historically, all of Twitch's streams are transported by the MPEG transport stream, or MPEG TS. This is a digital container format for transmitting a video and audio, as well as some metadata. Your MPEG2 or H.264 AVC video is packed up with audio, subtitles, whatever else is on Twitch's servers, and sent to viewers. That is why you often have .ts files whenever you would download a VOD from your Twitch dashboard. That's how it gets delivered to everyone. The problem here, 
That container format was originally released in 1995, when I was still learning to walk, and doesn't support the modern niceties that streamers keep demanding. Twitch is currently working on swapping out all of their transport stream pipeline from MPEG-TS to fragmented MP4. Now, you might recognize fragmented MP4 from talks about recent OBS updates. It was introduced in OBS 30 to give us protection from file corruption in MP4, along with new audio codec support, but came with the downside of not functioning super well in video editors without remuxing it back to normal MP4. This format is a wonderful container that supports newer, higher efficiency video codecs, like HEVC and AV1, which allow you to stream in higher resolution and overall higher quality for your bitrate. It also supports more tracks, metadata options, and works better for breaking videos into chunks and still cleanly delivering it to the viewer. Very important in a live environment where a signal might be lost at any point or a viewer might need to get bumped to a lower quality transcode to keep watching midstream and so on. So what does this mean for the ability to stream in 1440p or 4K or just better quality in general on Twitch? We don't know yet, and well, this takes time. It's called a pipeline for a reason. Think about ripping out the pipes in your home, or in this case, a mega office complex for newer, better pipes. You don't just press a button and make it happen. This is changing core components that Twitch has utilized possibly since the Justin.tv days and must be done very carefully. But it is moving along. Beyond just getting better quality, this means a much more dynamic future for Twitch streaming in terms of optimizing the viewer experience as much as possible. Those of you already in the closed beta for Twitch Enhanced, good news. You'll get to continue beta testing new developments with the Twitch Enhanced broadcasting updates before public testers. HEVC, or H.265 streaming, is the next stop on this hype train, with a couple partner streamers already having experimented with it, like Maximilian Dude. He's been a huge advocate for higher quality Twitch streams for years, so it's nice to see that he got to play around with it. Closed beta testers will get hands on that soonish, hopefully, and be able to stream in HEVC during testing times, and it sounds like it'll be neat. Be sure to follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash evilsfox, to see when I go live with it too. I've already been testing it recently as far as 4K as a fun exclusive test wave of sorts. And the quality was nothing short of mind blowing. Like, Ooh. I did everything at 4K. I'll have a video explaining my whole experience with it. I did everything at 4K. We'll be doing 1440p test streams and some other stuff as well. And for those who don't know, HEVC or H.265 is just an upgraded codec from H.264 that typically was bogged down with licensing fees and other restrictions, but does provide significantly better quality for any given bitrate compared to H.264, which allows you to either use less bitrate for your stream or to send more streams for the same bitrate or to get higher quality for the same bitrate, just like with AV1, just in my opinion, a little less good compared to AV1, but you know, it's still a wonderful stop here. While my eyes are definitely looking beyond the horizon at a future AV1 stop on the hype train, I'm stoked that we're getting the HEVC stop so soon. I'll continue to advocate for AV1 as much as I can, but if we're being real for a second, this takes time. AV1 hardware decoding is still in the early stages of being widely adopted. I've reported on a ton of, pro of that kind of progress before, and Apple just announced AV1 decode in their recent device announcements. But most of the world is still using phones and laptops to watch streams without hardware AV1 decoding. Without that hardware chip to decode the video, playing back the stream has to be done on the CPU of the device, which means probably needing to watch in lower quality and eating up a lot more battery usage. So it's not a win-win for everyone there, which means you're watching for less time or being discouraged to watch streams at all, which is not what we want. Plus, please remember that this is all just an experiment at the moment. It's totally possible that we get far into this testing and these new codecs just don't make sense for Twitch to roll out. Uh, perhaps it doesn't help viewers stick around, or perhaps the trade-off of the new codecs versus viewer satisfaction isn't actually worth it. While Twitch's public statements have very much said that they want this to happen, there's no guarantee that we don't end up with a pipeline where H.264 and 1080p are still the standard. Realistically, 4K adoption of live viewership, where most of the viewers are probably on mobile, isn't as widespread as we, the streamers, who want our work in the best quality possible, might want to believe. Thankfully, with the changes being worked on and the pipeline shifts I discussed, the future of streaming on Twitch is going to be a lot more dynamic. The new system will support multiple codecs in the transcoding ladder at a time, which means choosing the right format for each viewer. Ultimately, that's, that's the whole mission here, providing the best possible stream for all viewers, which is how you're going to best connect with your audience in the first place. That means a lot of potential for dynamic codec and format interaction, uh, perhaps the highest resolution and bitrate formats are HEVC, and then there's still a couple H.264 formats for the viewers who can't watch it or need to watch it lower qualities. This is how my test streams were done. Uh, typically, like the 4K one would be HEVC, and then the other qualities are going to be H.264. 
uh, or 1440p would be HEVC, and then 1080p, 720p, and whatever would be H.264. That way you have both, because there's all sorts of things to work out with device compatibility, browser compatibility, so I like that there's a dynamic nature supported here. Or perhaps we make it to that AV1 station, but only the top quality format at 4K or 1440p is AV1, and the rest is HEVC, and then a 480p or 360p H.264 backup quality. We'll see. The functionality in OBS and the changes being made to the pipeline in the player can allow for all of this. We just need time to, for Twitch to collect the data that they need and figure out what will work best, what quirks need to be worked out, and so on. This also means that there's a possible future where Twitch might let you stream separate landscape and portrait canvases at the same time, where then mobile viewers can just swap to the portrait one while they're watching. I don't know if we'll see it. Twitch has been fixing up their mobile app a lot lately, and being able to stream in portrait is you know, an important step in optimizing your stream for mobile, so it would be nice to see, but, uh, uh, but but friendly reminder that none of this is available to, like, the public yet that I've been talking about for the last couple minutes. This is just something that the enhanced broadcasting technology could power in the future if they wanted these types of features. And if you didn't know, the dynamic rendition transcoding is how YouTube video delivery already works. When you upload a video to YouTube, you could get upwards of, like, 16 different versions of your video transcoded for different playback modes, even multiple copies in the same codec and resolution to be delivered to different kinds of devices and viewers. You don't really know what's happening. Uh, the viewer just either watches or, at most, picks a resolution, and YouTube servers handles the rest. We're looking at that kind of optimization coming to Twitch here, too, but in a different way built for live, which is awesome. I know that many of you are anxiously awaiting news about AV1 and being able to stream higher resolutions to Twitch, but I said in January that this would take a while, and honestly, I'm kind of impressed that we're already having discussions about possible HEVC testing and me having already tested it out, which was uh, it, it was mind-blowing. There's no VOD on Twitch. Uh, I have to upload it and edit it up. I'll have a video on it. But I had a blast getting out and streaming again. I've I've been having so much fun testing all this out, and we stream every Friday over on Twitch. Again, twitch.tv slash evilsfox. And it's just, it's wonderful to see Twitch so invested in upgrading the pipeline. I, 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 I think the viewers are the ones who really win here in terms of quality and latency, and I look forward to continue to see the optimizations that continue coming out. I'll keep an eye out for that AV1 stop on our train on our train ride, but for now, enjoy the ride. Links to everything you need to get started are down below, as well as links to our stream safe, video safe, free music from Backing Track. Follow on Twitch and remember to be kind, rewind.